great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all of you watching on YouTube. Um, for those of you here in the chapel, if you please sign the uh, attendance records and pass that around so that everyone can have an opportunity. Um, let's see. Today is our annual meeting. Uh, in most churches, I would say that there could be a little groan, uh, but not here. Uh, we, we have refined the process of the annual meeting, and it's actually sort of fun. I say that, and, and then I, I suddenly thought, huh, I hope I didn't just jinx that. Um, but I'm hoping you'll stay. What we'll do is immediately after the service, um, we'll, we'll move things around. You could have a, a time to run to the restroom and then come back. And then we'll start the annual meeting. Annual meeting should last 30, 35 minutes. It shouldn't take that long. And then we will adjourn and we will walk down the hallway into the fellowship hall and through and then back up the, the far hallway where all the food has been placed and we'll end up in 136. In, in room 136, which is directly across from us. Please stay. I know that there's a lot of food, and um, it, was all, it was all catered, but it was catered by us. So that's, we need to say thank you for those who did that, but we'll wait and do that later. And, um, and let's just have a good day. Just have a fun day. Um, any other announcements? Okay. Birthdays, anniversaries. All right. Clear on the way. All right. Um, so let us pray. Father God, you have given Jesus all authority. All authority that is in heaven is on earth because of him. When he speaks, he speaks like no one else. When he acts, he acts like no one else. He is worthy of our praise. So Lord, I'm asking this morning that, that everything we do Everything we say, the ways in which we respond to the scriptures, to the prayers, to the liturgy, all of it, including the music, let us remember that Jesus is worthy. Help us, Lord, to respond to that worthiness with joy and thanksgiving and uplifted hearts because there is no one no one like Jesus in his holy name we pray Amen, Amen. Would you please stand and we'll sing together the opening hymn <coughs>
I will make you as a light for the nations. That my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Would you please join me in the colic for purity? Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, you know that we are set in the midst of so many and grave dangers that in our frailty of nature we cannot always stand upright. Grant us your strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through every temptation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. <coughs> A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God or see his great fire anymore, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, they are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words, that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, 
or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how may we know the word that the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come, come to pass or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. A prophet has spoken it presumptuously, and you need not be afraid of him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let's say the psalm back to the Lord by half verse. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks unto the Lord with my whole heart. In the company of the upright and among the congregation. The works of the Lord are great. So tell by all who have a pleasure in them. His work is worthy to be praised and held in honor. And his righteousness endures forever. He has made his marvelous works to be had in remembrance. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He has given food to those who fear him. He shall ever be mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works. That he may give them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are true. They stand fast forever and ever. And are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all those who live accordingly. His praise endures forever. reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now, concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol is not real, is no real existence, and that there is no God but one. For although there are may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, and from whom all things and for whom we exist and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and thoughts, and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food that has really offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not condemn us to God, we are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you having knowledge, eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged? If his conscience is weak to eat food offered to an idol, and so, by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died. Thus, sinning against your brother and wounding his, their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my no brother stumble. The word of the Lord. I must be God. Love is this that 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? a new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread throughout, everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I want to start off in the um, book of Deuteronomy just briefly to point out that uh, this conversation that's going on, uh, that's Moses. Moses is uh, speaking with God and God is telling him what he's going to do in the future tells him that he's going to raise up another prophet, a prophet like Moses, and this prophet will have uh, great power and authority, that he will, um, uh, he will have the ability to do great things and, and to prophesy in ways that will astound people. And then he also tells Moses, but be aware that not everyone who claims to be a prophet is a prophet. And so if you find that someone is prophesying things that don't come to pass, then you don't have to worry about them. You don't have to worry about what they have to say because they are false prophets. Now let's go to the gospel. The gospel lesson Last week, Jesus called um, called the first four of his disciples, and he asked them. They were out fishing, or actually, they were mending their nets after fishing, and he called them to follow him. And immediately, they jumped out of their boats and followed Jesus. And this. What we've read today is what happens um, almost immediately after. It says, and they went to Capernaum. Now, Capernaum was a city that was actually a quite prosperous, um, quite prosperous fishing community. They had a large seawall that they had built uh, against the Sea of Galilee, which is really just a huge lake. It's five miles across and nine miles wide and and uh, uh, but it is so big that the winds can generate sig significant ways waves so they built a seawall and then on to that they built uh, piers so the fishermen could come in and unload their their catch this is a place where Jesus is going to establish his early ministry and we hear of him going into this to the synagogue to teach now every Jewish 
male, was allowed to attend synagogue. I mean, all were allowed to attend synagogue, but the Jewish males were allowed to uh, comment on scripture. So when scripture was read, anyone could make a comment about it. Although, probably, probably most of the men didn't, because there were also um, scribes there. And the scribes were the ones who um, took the scrolls. It's not like today. It's not like, I mean, every one of us has a Bible. Back then, they were incredibly expensive because they had to be hand, handmade. Transcribed. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Hand transcribed incredibly accurately. They knew what the middle was. The entire middle of whatever it was they were transcribing, whether it was Isaiah or one of the other prophets, they knew. And so what they did was they, they counted. They counted the figures. And when they got to the middle of it, it they had to land on that letter, knowing that, that, that they had gotten it exactly right. And then they counted backwards from the last one to there, and they had to land on that one as well. If it was off by one letter, the entire parchment had to be burned. Painstaking work. But the scribes were not just there to be like human Xerox machines. They were also there, they loved the word, and so they studied it. They listened to what other scribes or rabbis would teach from, from the law and from the prophets. And, and so they were present in synagogue, and they would say, they would stand up and say, well, Rabbi so-and-so once said about this passage, and, and they would say that, and then somebody else would say, yes, but Rabbi so-and-so added this part. And they, it, would, it would get crazy because a lot of times the normal folks who were there, they got lost. They didn't know what was, who, which one of these authorities should I be listening to? I mean, they were all good rabbis, but was there one that was greater than another? going to make a comment about attendance at synagogue, but I think I'll avoid that. Um, and so here we find Jesus on the Sabbath. He comes in to the synagogue. He's a Jew. He's male. They, one of the rabbis, reads a scripture, and he stands to talk about it. And he was teaching them. But he did something different. He didn't say, well, Rabbi so-and-so said this about that. He proclaimed it as if he, he was proclaiming it from God's own lips. He was in a way, acting like a prophet. But of course, he was so much more than a prophet. And so the people, it's, it's hard for me to express the shock and the amazement of the people who heard Jesus because they were so used to this other form of teaching that they never really fully understood, 
and they hear Jesus, and it's like he brings the scriptures to life. It's like God himself is speaking. Hint, hint. <laughs> and they're saying, what is this? Is this a new teaching? He speaks with authority. He doesn't depend on the authority of others. He speaks as if he has the authority to say the truth. And there, as one commentator said, see, there I went. And Rabbi so-and-so said, <laughs> they were speechless, they were astounded, they were in awe, they were blown away by what Jesus said. And then there was a man who had an unclean spirit. And the spirit cried out through the man, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Now, let's stop right here. This is a, a demon who has possessed this man. The demon is speaking, and he has properly identified who Jesus is. He is Jesus of Nazareth. What's my place? And then he says, have you come to destroy us? Now he's identifying who he is. He is saying, yes, I am a demon. I'm a fallen angel. I am in possession of this man. And the unclean spirit knows what Jesus is capable of doing. Um, I'm trying to remember where it is in Scripture. I think, I think it's in James, but don't quote me on that. That there is a, a theology of demons. And the demon knows how this is going to work out. He, know, he was there. He was an angel. He was there when Satan was cast out and all of the other angels fell to earth. He has been imprisoned on the earth, unable to re-enter the gates of heaven, and he's waiting because he knows there's going to come a day when God is going to send someone and that person is going to end up judging them and sending them into permanent imprisonment and destruction. So the demon's got it right. He's basically saying, is this the time? Is this, where, is this the moment that you're going to come and, and destroy us? Because I know who you are, the Holy One of God. The demon hasn't said anything that's not true. He has identified Jesus properly. He has told us of his power. He says, I know you, and you are the Messiah. So Jesus does something really interesting at this point. He says, he says, um, be silent and come out of him. Now, I always wondered why he did that. It didn't make sense to me because everything the demon had said was true. Why not just let him get up and, you know, preach it? Because that wasn't the demon's job. The demon had lost his authority to proclaim truth when he rebelled against God. 
the authority to proclaim truth has been given to us. It's our job, not the demon's job. So he silences him because he doesn't want the people listening to a demon because once a demon has your attention and has drawn you in with some truth, then he will start twisting the truth. Then he'll start his lies and the lies will slide in very sweetly because we had been seduced initially by the truth and it was just a nice gentle slide from truth to lies. So he calls the demon out and the demon kind of shows his his true self. He comes out immediately. He has to because Jesus has authority over him. But he doesn't have to come out willingly. He can still rebel a little bit. So he throws the man to the ground and shrieks as he comes out of him. It probably might have even been painful for the demon to lose control of the man. Now we don't hear anything more about this man or the demon, demon's gone, but what we know is that the impact on the people who viewed it, they'd never seen anything like that. Now, not only does he proclaim with authority the word of God, but he has authority over demons. Jesus hasn't even healed anybody yet. It's kind of like hold my beer. You know, he's ramping it up. We're seeing more and more of who Jesus is. And the people are amazed. And all because Jesus has demonstrated who he is. Now the question for us, oh, I, I need to finish the gospel. I noticed down here it says, um, you know, they were amazed that he was uh, commanding even uh, the unclean spirits um, and they obey him but what happened that was really interesting here was it wasn't the demon that told everybody at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the region surrounding region of Galilee it wasn't the demon talking it was the people talking they had seen his glory, they knew who he was, and they, they talked about it. It was amazing. And then what happened after that? Well, eventually they stopped talking. Eventually they fell back into their old old habits, they kind of surrendered to their old sins, and it did not go well for them. And that's a warning to us. We can hear the truth. We can recognize who Jesus is. We can, we can even attempt to give him all authority in our lives. Everything we are, every, every thought, we can ask him to help us take captive every thought so that we can live more like Jesus. But when we start that slippery slope of just thinking of Jesus as a, a nice, guy that I can say, Lord, can I, could I please have a Corvette? 
and don't, no, I'm not asking for a Corvette. I'm, too, I'm really too old to get into a Corvette. <laughs> Range Rover might be nice, but. Uh, <laughs> English patient. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is, we start thinking of Jesus in <coughs> human terms and not recognizing he is worthy of everything, worthy of honor and praise and thanksgiving, worthy of worship, worthy of glory, worthy to be proclaimed our king and to have authority over who we are and authority over the sins we commit so that they can be banished. Authority over the, the demons, the, the memories that sometimes hold us captive with certain thoughts or certain fears. He has authority over that. And if we continue to slide away, we'll never see anything great happen. We'll eventually just become like the rest of our society that is sliding away and becoming more and more distant from God. And we'll see more and more evil rise because they've become accustomed to evil. The world is growing more and more broken because we have allotted the proclamation of truth to the demons. Mm. They are the ones that people are listening to. They are the ones that are questioning scripture. They are the ones that are saying, well, yeah, but now we're a much more mature society, so that really doesn't count anymore. They are the ones the demons are the ones who are lying about who Jesus really is. They know who he is, but it's their nature to lie. And so they are destroying the world because we aren't doing our job. We aren't proclaiming. We aren't announcing that Jesus has come, Jesus died, Jesus rose, and very soon, Jesus is coming again. In a few minutes, the, uh, the ensemble is going to sing, Is He Worthy? I want you to listen really carefully to that. That's a challenge. They're, they're asking questions in that song. And the questions are for you. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all honor and glory? Is he worthy of being your king, your Lord? Is he worthy of being the one to call out the lies of the enemy? Is he worthy to strengthen you and enable you and give you opportunities to proclaim who he is and who you are because of him. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Would you please stand and let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, hear our prayer. We pray for the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. And as we pray for the well-being of our people, we pray that you will keep reminding us that you have the authority that you will make us alert to the lies of the demons, that you will live through us, that we will be bold in proclaiming the truth to a culture that is going further and further away. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Archbishop Foley, for Bishop Bill, for Father Chris, for Deacons Dean and uh, Jean and uh, Jay, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation, and as we pray for our clergy, we pray that you will embolden them, that you will protect them, that you will guide them, that you will keep them from falling. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for Jerry and Stacy, Chuck and Robin, Victor and Christella, and all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, you know that among those who teach and disciple others, some are false prophets. And we pray that you will expose them, that you will remove them, that you will replace them, that you will fortify those who proclaim the truth, that you will guide their steps. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. And Lord, we pray that you will provide for their needs that you will protect them, that you will keep them from falling in the midst of persecution, that you will even give them joy, that you will give them hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially President Biden, members of Congress and the Supreme Court, Governor Stitt, Mayor Lewis, we, all, we pray that you will give them your guidance, that you will give them humility, that we, you will work through them to fulfill your purposes. Lord, keep reminding us to pray for them. We also pray for those who serve in the police forces, and we pray for your protection over them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray for those who are experiencing job loss or who are experiencing challenges in their lives. We pray especially for our loved ones who don't know you. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will draw them to Jesus. At this time, you're invited to lift up in prayer those whom the Lord has placed on your heart. We pray for healing mercies for those who are sick. We pray for salvation for our friends who are lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving 
Let us pray. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for those of you who are with us today who have gone through so many illnesses. It's a blessing to have you back. We missed you. We pray for Marshall, friend of Gary Henderson, who fell and broke his hip. We pray for comfort, encouragement, and healing for Marshall. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Dave, Dixie's nephew, that he will be able to get the needed appointments with a diabetes specialist and an infectious disease specialist. We pray that he will be able to get the infected toe and his diabetes both under control quickly. Lord, in your mercy. In our Owasso Fire Department, we pray today for Shift A, Station 1, Battalion Chief Jared Linthicum, Captain Jason Jackson, Lieutenant Tyler Adamick, Firefighter Paramedics Devin Bally, Brett Quimby, and Maxwell Smith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray today for Resurrection Anglican Fellowship in Greenwood Village, Colorado. The clergy, the Venerable Archdeacon Philip Eberhardt, the Reverend Ethel Lorash, the Reverend Dr. Margie McCaslin, the Reverend Barbara Rousseau, and the Reverend David Agulo. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit.
Romans 10. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? Join us in the responses if you would like. Mm -hmm.
please stand for the doxology. <coughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right. Our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who took on our mortal flesh to reveal his glory that he might bring us out of darkness and into his own glorious light. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. kneel or sit as is your custom. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Whenever you, uh, pardon me, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, 
Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now <coughs> and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacri sacrificed for us. Therefore, let's keep the feast. Hallelujah! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them into remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on Him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Jesus Christ, to keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. 
of Christ. Shed the body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, we honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.